Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good to be here with all of you, especially my guest for today, Corinne Altamore. <laughs> Did I say that right? Yes. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> so, hello, everyone. It is absolutely amazing today. Wow. Today is what? Where are we? May Day. It's May. We just had a beautiful Mother's Day that had just happened. And here we have this beautiful entrepreneur, what I call Corinne. And so today we're going to interview Corinne. I'd like to start by saying I've known you. Wow. Uh, <laughs> a little while <laughs> from the time that you were this uh actually not not that big uh, from the time that you were five years old where i worked for your father and i was his secretary and now today at this time you probably have people who are your secretaries so it's truly a lovely and an honor to have you here with me, Corinne John. And I like, you know what John means, right? Mm -mm. Corinne John, dear mm -mm. Corinne. <laughs> Come on. Uh, so in Armenian, it's a term of endearment. When we want to say John, that means dear Corinne. So it's like Corinne John. <laughs> well, that makes sense. I'm so glad we could connect and make this happen today. This should be, this will be fun. Yes, it will be. So, Corinne, uh, please take a moment and introduce yourself, and then we will begin this incredible interview of interviewing you. Sure. We can go all sorts of places. So, uh, originally from the Los Angeles, California area, I my previous career was as a professional musician. It took me all over the place. One of those places was Philadelphia. So I came oh. here to Philadelphia just about 10 years ago now. And music career doesn't always pay all of the bills. So I also was working in Philly, uh, ended up working at the Federal Reserve Bank as a project manager. And that was where I met my now husband and business partner, Sergio. Mm. Working there as a project manager, I was also looking for my first passive real estate investment acquisition because I wasn't sure I was going to stay a project manager for the Fed forever. And so I wanted to build a little bit of a financial basis for myself should I decide to go back into perhaps a less financially stable job or life career or whatnot. So that is how Sergio and I met. We spent our date nights touring properties and neighborhoods. <laughs> and then I found the property and then we spent our date nights and weekends getting that property up and uh, running and managing the tenants that came with the property. And here we are now. So we started dating 2012. So here we are now just about eight years later. And we now have a full-blown company. What started as a side hustle, we ended up both quitting our, our day jobs. And our company, Hearthfire Holdings, now manages overseas, is responsible for, otherwise involved in about $35 million worth of real estate assets across residential, multifamily, mixed-use commercial, and uh, self-storage. The last three years has been very heavy into self-storage. Also along the way, we had our, our beautiful daughter, Stella, who turned four in March. And that is my Cliff Notes version of my story. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, here's the thing. You have um, excelled going from and i remember it's like your father and, and of course mom and dad both instilled in their children uh academics and art and hard work <laughs> uh, yes and hard work that and it has paid off and in the beginning when 
we are when you were a younger how was it how was how difficult it was this uh regiment and structure to where you are today and are you as regiment and structured with your daughter oh good question so i don't know if my parents are watching um <laughs> Eventually, they will. <laughs> and whoever um, is here and watching this, by all yes. means, you can make a comment and we will respond <laughs> to all the comments. So the approach that Sergio and I are taking so far with our daughter, and neither of us are experts at it at all, right? So I'm sure we're making our fair share of mistakes. Um, but sh she's just turned four. So I think we are in that phase of her life where she's not in a school sort of structure, right? So we're trying to give her as much flexibility to explore herself, her, her world, however she's feeling on any personal, on any, on any given day, whether we're playing dress up and being Elsa from Frozen or Mulan or the Beast or <laughs> um, whatever sorts of characters she feels like trying on and play acting for the day. Um, we give her that flexibility and we also do a ton of family adventures um, we work really hard, but we do also try to in incorporate uh, family travel. So something else that we have kind of as a side hustle right now is a very small RV rental business. We ended up buying an RV for our own personal use. Um, <laughs> And so this all comes back to your question. So we use the RV to go away. We'll do like a, a weekend completely impromptu, just out and about and have those sorts of random adventures with Stella and expose her to whatever we can, right? And experiencing the world through physically being in it and inhabiting it rather than as much as we possibly can, rather than experiencing it through a screen. Uh, we try to get her out and into the world um, that's been particularly challenging during COVID lockdowns. And so we modify and spend a lot more time outside in nature and exploring rocks and trees and dirt and bugs and birds and, and all of that. Um, so that's been our approach with her to till now to your question about regiments. Um, we are exploring uh, for her future education options, we're exploring homeschooling, we're exploring a couple other variations of hybrid approaches, maybe uh, more from a selfish perspective because we want to continue growing our business and experiencing our lives on our terms, which would involve a little bit more location independence, a little bit less being stuck in any one area for the given school year. Um, so we're looking at we're looking at ways to still get her a full and well-rounded education while also uh, being able to be in person experiencing different parts of, of our world. Okay. Um so you are creating a balance. We're attempting to. <laughs> now, what is something, uh, was there something your parents did when you were a kid that you swore you'd never do it yourself? Nothing comes immediately to mind right now. So I'm going to go with no, because I think if there was a gut reaction, then it would be there. Um, my parents did a lot of adventures with us. Um, I also had a lot of, we followed through on our commitments, right? So maybe I was signed up for ballet or violin lessons or whatnot, and I ended up being terrible at it. But because I was signed up and had made a commitment to for X amount of time to follow through on that, um, we followed through and then <laughs> at the right time, we're able to readjust. Um, but there's nothing coming to mind right away of things from my upbringing that I am definitely not doing with Stella. I don't have anything okay. right now. You have such an angelic voice. Mm, look at that breath. It's like owning it. You just breathe it into it. 
Um, and you went all the way to the Vatican. Share just a moment. Uh, how was it singing at the Vatican in Rome uh, and being there? Um, so music is for me a way to pray and a way to experience and create and evoke and contribute to something above and beyond our day to day. Mm. So my music making experiences have, have been wonderful and I've been very, uh, blessed in the opportunities that I had and the opportunities that I worked incredibly hard for and then other opportunities that seemed to just appear for me. And it and it's a amazing the balance of both, right? Of of hard work and then how things happen when you work so that you are in a position to receive from the universe from God from whatever. Um, so my experiences with music have been nothing short of uh, come. Um, uh, th they have been life changing for me, and they have been soul fulfilling. Um, it's less a part of my life now, and that is okay because those experiences will never leave me. Um, and it was a very special time in my life and I'm really excited about what I'm doing now, what I've been building the past 10 years. Um, I think it would be folly to try to hang on to something when perhaps the time for a natural moving on or changing or evolution has come. And so that's where I was when, when my life kind of shifted away from, full-time, everything, music, my entire identity, and then exploring real estate investing and growing a business and everything else that came out of that. Um, but those life experiences and that part of my identity is still there. And I think helps me be a more fully rounded businesswoman now, because in business, we all come from different backgrounds and perspectives. And so one thing that I absolutely learned from my art and music uh, years was appreciating all the different cultures that we come from and all the different ways that we contribute and communicate and experience and, and perhaps how to share that with one another. It's tough because music is beyond words, so you don't have that language barrier necessarily all the time. Sometimes in business meetings, <laughs> it's a little bit more tricky. So does that mean, uh, so here's a follow through to that question, since you did not truly really answer that one. Sorry. Do you start singing? <laughs> uh, I know. Uh, do you start singing when you want to connect inside? Do you still sing when you want to feel one with yourself? Is mu is singing is still part of you, even in your own privacy? Do you go there? I am going more into silent prayer and meditation more recently. Mm -hmm. I do still sing in two local uh, religious communities by by us out here. So I do have that. Um, it's been especially challenging, as you can probably imagine, over this past year. Um, for, me, for me, myself personally, um, with a four-year-old running through the house, I have been turning more and more towards moments of silence and, and internal quiet meditation rather than contributing more, more glorious noise to the universe. I, I have enough of that in my life right now. So I'm leaning more towards silence. Mommy, <laughs> mommy, mommy. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So through this COVID year, uh, what have you become better at saying no to? Um, I have been, that's a good question. I don't know if I've been asked that one before. What I am, and I don't know if it would necessarily be specific to this COVID year, but mm -hmm. what I am working on saying no to is doing all the things and being the one doing everything. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And and for, because I am particularly challenged when it comes to saying no, for me, my version of saying no is a little bit more along the lines of, can you clarify for me who exactly you're expecting to do what exactly from that sentence? Usually to my husband, right? He'll say, <laughs> we need to blah, 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 blah. And I'll say, okay, when you say we, who exactly are you talking about? <laughs> and let's break that down. Is that a daily interview interval? Is that weekly? How? What exactly are the steps that need to go into getting that accomplished? <laughs> so that's my version of saying. Who is that. the we? Yes. Yep. <laughs> and once we clarify, oh, okay, we're asking Corinne to do this. Then I'll. Then I. So um, uh, the book "Who Not How" was really transformative for me. Um, mm. And so the primary um, the primary message in there is when we're facing a big goal, our default is usually to think, okay, how am I going to do that? This book, the whole premise is flip that script and instead ask yourself, who do I know who can do that for me? Right? Wow. Who, who, I, who I can bring into my team to do that. If that's something that I am not an absolute expert in, who do I know who is? And how, and then how do I get them to join me and do that with me, right? So um, for me, a big step in COVID was take the simplest thing, right? Such as, as, as grocery stores, right? And going grocery shopping. Instead, leveraging Instacart or leveraging automated food delivery services, which all of the all of the grocery stores were pivoting to anyway because they were trying to control their foot traffic, right? They were trying to minimize exposure risk for the population. So that became much more popularly available. So leveraging those sorts of subscription services. So I'm not spending a half hour wrangling a, a four-year-old from her car seat and then into and, and then into the grocery store, keeping her occupied while I'm also trying to manage getting my shopping list done, right? I just set that on autopilot now and I have delivery come to me, I, re I repeat, you know, our, our regular meal plan, we have a meal plan as, of just completely prepared meals that come to us. When you when you balance the cost of these sorts of services versus the value that you place on your time and where your time and effort is really best leveraged to contribute to the world, I would rather pay someone to do those sorts of things so that I can spend more time talking with women such as you, um, connecting with other folks as we're growing our team, um, networking within our industry business, making an impact that way. Um, and so that was a big, big long-winded answer to your question about what I've been saying no to in COVID. So I've been saying no to things that are not the best use of my time and my talents. And I've been saying yes to outsourcing and bringing other who's into my life to do it for me so that we can all spend our time doing what we're best at. Uh, one thing I've learned in my business is um, because it's like a one man show. Um, I was the accountant, the marketer, the therapist, the cleaning crew, uh, you know, and uh, even the bookkeeper. So I got to a point now I have someone helping me doing all the accounting work. Mm -hmm. And then someone is doing the tax work. I have someone who's doing all the system analysis. And I have a coach which helps with the strategic outlook of the business. And I've got someone who's doing my sales and marketing. A lot of things that I know I could do but now I concentrate on the things that I love to do. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So in a way, it's not saying no, it's saying yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it absolutely. Yeah. So have you ever done something really impulsive? I don't know. I mean, this is correct. Everything is like, you're, the way I've seen you is, <laughs> I wonder, does Corinne have any moments that she does things impulsively? Uh, I don't think I can take credit for it. My my husband is the impulse side of the shop. <laughs> um, I did go along with him buying RVs, and we bought two. <laughs> that was a little. <laughs> that was that was a different level, even for us. Um, but he had this 
business idea. And um, so we're going with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what do you do for fun? We, oh, what do we do for fun? We travel and we- What do you do for fun? What do I do for fun? Oh, yes, I am oh, from Peru. Me. <laughs> Not the we. Okay, me, just me. <laughs> Is everything about you a we? It's it's you know it's really dominant right now. Uh, it's something that I'm working on, but um, right now I am very much a multi identity personality. <laughs> um, <laughs> So what do I do for fun? I'm racking my brain here, Lisa. I'm trying to come up with a good answer. I don't have any good answers right now. Um, I have been, so I had this breakthrough probably a couple weeks, a couple weeks ago now, realizing that I am terrible answering questions that I have to answer for me. I'm really good at answering questions for we. Um, and so um, I have since been throwing myself into a little bit more me time. I do... Uh, I'm a morning person, so in the mornings, uh, I was giving myself grace, and instead of jumping right into work at five, um, I'll alternate days, and I'll have some days uh, every other day where instead of jumping right into work, I will read and journal and pray and meditate and ask for things that I need or that I feel that I need um, in my life and ask for for grace and help and support and live in that for a little bit, for some quiet, usually in the dark of the morning before the sun comes up, definitely before my daughter wakes up. Um, so for right now, what I am doing for less fun and more about self-fulfillment is reading books that inspire me and reflecting upon them and seeking for ways to incorporate any um, inspiration that moves me to affect change in my life and first bit by bit make little tiny atomic habit changes in my life so that I can then open up more space and really rediscover what I would like to do for fun. When I speak and I do my guide us and coaching with young moms, I usually say it's awesome to know that there is a time out for your child and or your children but always remember you can also say it's time out for mommy mm -hmm. and that's the time that you can give to yourself and for them to also learn that time out does not always mean punishment it means time for yourself as much as i want to take time out for me mm -hmm. mm. And, th and thankfully i haven't had to put stella in time out more than twice i've been put in timeout she puts me in timeout sometimes so um so i, I take it <laughs> she does she puts me in timeout in my room by myself with the doors closed and i say okay, okay. all right <laughs> so this is a great segue to my question which is what advice would you give um a young woman starting in the workforce today Ooh, in the corporate workforce today? <clears throat> or in sure. entrepreneurship? Yeah, I, you know, because my time in the workforce was so short. I spent five years and one month in my W-2 job because they matched our 401k and you have to be in five years to be vested. So I stayed in five years and one month. Um, oh, wow. So that was strategic. It was indeed, yes. Nice. Um, I was very, very, very lucky that the man that I worked with in my W-2 job, my boss, um, just happens to be a fantastic human being. Um, and I got so incredibly lucky that, um, that his was the job that I got matched up with and then that he had a need on his team and I was in a stage of life where I was ready, willing, and, and, and able to make a complete career jump. You asked if I'd ever done anything not strategic. Saying yes to the W-2 job for the Federal Reserve of Philadelphia was definitely not strategic and it was a leap and I did not really 
analyze or overthink that one. I just needed, I knew that I needed something different in my life. It came from a solid human being and the way that it was presented to me, I, I just said yes. And it, that absolutely changed the trajectory of my life. Um, recommendations for any young women coming into the workforce now. Um, the What I am learning now, 10 years into it, is the power of networks. And mm. it's not about what you know. What you know is important, um, but who you know is so much even more important nowadays. Not purely for the sake of climbing the corporate ladder, per se, but just being able to have the right people in your back pocket to call upon as you navigate all the different stages of life, as you reach those crossroads where you're trying to make a decision or trying to weigh the value of, of what you're being told or what's being offered or what you're struggling with. Having people who have been there already and have gone through it and can tell you, not solve or make the decisions for you, but can tell you what it was like when they went through it and share their life experience. And at the very least, you know that you're not alone. You know that whatever situation you're trying to navigate is not unique and that plenty of people have gone through it before. And hopefully that will give you faith that you can uh, work through it yourself and, and ultimately make the best decisions for your own life journey. So I would invest heavily in networks, um, and building your, the right people around you, whether directly in your workspace, whether that means coworkers, whether that's as an entrepreneur building your team, and also in the different buckets of your life, in, in the personal side of your life, it, your expanded family, right? Making your family. Um, I didn't come to that realization when I was in the music um, hustle. And perhaps if I had, I would have had more resources to help me um, more maturely navigate through a couple key decision points that I had to make, right? And now that I'm in business and Sergio and I have been actively surrounding ourselves with people better, smarter, further along than us who are who have an open heart and a willingness to actively mentor is too strong of a word, but actively be in our lives and answer the phone when we call and, and give their perspective or be in the trenches with us and help us figure it out together. Um, just the power of the right people in, in, in our circles has been enormous, especially the past two years, I'm mm. going to say. The past two years has been, there's it's been a really critical uptick and there's been certain key people who have come into our lives who I would directly attribute that to. Well, being a child of uh, an, inc uh, an incredible couple, especially your father that I truly admire and uh, love and your mom who I genuinely care for, for she is truly a heart and soul, just pure grace. And that's who you represent. Um, coming from Service Club, the Kiwanis was like this network of support system, network of people we can go to, rely upon, and learn service for community. So I hear what you are saying, and I... Uh, sometimes there is also this joke, it's not who you know or what you know, it's what you know about who you know. <laughs> right? That opens doors. That said, what is the simplest gift you've received that has meant million dollars for you? Time. Oh. Time. When, when you have... Um, when you have people who you can, who will sit, sit with you either in person or on the phone or on Zoom, <laughs> depending on where we are in our world, people who will give their time to be present with you. That's, there's no price on that. Absolutely none. There's no price in you being here today because I know the two of you, the we, has built this incredible conglomerate 
industry that you are building, not only for yourself, for your future, it's turning into a legacy. Would you like to share just a little bit more about Heartfire uh, Holdings? Um, sure. So it was, we are seeking to leave a legacy with it. So thank you for acknowledging that. Um, Hearthfire Holdings was founded so that we could bring our family and friends into the journey of real estate investing with us because you can accomplish so much more uh, through the power of combining our, our different assets, our different talents and all of that. So we started syndicating in small multifamily in 2013. And our most recent, or in nine days, we're closing on two self-storage properties. Uh, we will be, <laughs> we will have six self-storage properties at about 150,000 net rentable square feet in central Pennsylvania area. We are sharing that with just about 100 investors. When you think about that number, and the families that those investors are connected with, the children that that is going to impact directly, the people who are involved in real estate who otherwise might be completely, feel completely um, not set up to get into it on their own. And so that's why our whole approach is through syndication so that we can bring people in in a safe way. Um, coming into syndication as a limited partner, your only exposure risk is the amount that you originally invest, right? So you don't have to worry about a slip, trip and fall lawsuit coming after you and taking everything and then some. You're only, for our investors, their only exposure is what the original amount that they invest with us. We take on all the rest of the risk and we're okay with that because that we, First, we know what we're doing. We build in enough safeguards to protect ourselves as much as possible. And, and we appreciate being able to share the journey with, with folks who otherwise would not. Um, and we love being able to build and grow and impact lives that way. So thank you for giving me a second to talk about that. We're really, we're really excited about how far we've come and um, have have big plans in the pipeline for what we'll, we're not stopping. So more, 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 more to go. Well, it's been absolutely a pleasure and an honor for me to know your family being present when you were getting married and hear you sing. And most importantly, um, one day I will be there so that I can also hug Stella Pia. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, uh you know, this is a journey, and I think life is a journey, and the people who come into our life, it's like being on a train, and sometimes we have a ticket to be in that compartment, and it's sometimes in the first compartment, the first class, and other times we are in the coach, and no matter what it is, no matter where we are in transition of life, the ones who come and go, it's the ones who stay in the long run because of who we are and what we build together. So for that, I want to thank you for your precious time and your husband, your child, your family. And would you please finish this uh, segment of ours by saying the completing this sentence, Corinne is? <laughs> powerful I love you I love you too darling I hope that this was uh, I hope that this provided value to anyone who joined us today and thank you so much for this opportunity to chat how did you bit. like it it was great it was uh, it was um, 
went deeper than you know, I have to be honest, most of my interviews and talks and whatnot have been very much in operate how, how to operate a self storage facility, <laughs> how to manage properties, how are you handling tenants during an eviction moratorium? So this has been refreshing. <laughs> Do you want to talk about eviction? No, 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 I don't. <laughs> So this has been great. Thank you so much. Oh, you are divine. You are a divine soul. And I congratulate you for all the things you are building, creating, and moving forward in life. I look forward to seeing you again soon and hug you in person, my dearest. Absolutely. And for all our viewers, thank you for being a part of us. And this segment, this is Lisa Bubari. Uh, you have joined Heal Talk, Real Talk with Lisa. And until the next time, God bless you. And may the universal light surround you. Good night. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.